Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at this charming Coulter CT100 telescope from the 1970s or so. Now, this is uh, fairly primitive, but workable. Slides on like that. This is a coffee can lid. This goes on back here. That goes in there. Pretty much, there's a telescope. Now, there's a few little uh, few little considerations here. One is this thing slides back and forth for balance and for focusing. There's a fine focus knob here so once you get this pretty well roughly positioned you can fine focus this right here. And of course what you want to do with this is to put it on a tripod of some sort and this is uh, happen to have this little equatorial. They show this on a uh, an equatorial mount. It's a bit more robust than this. I had to jury rig a couple of things but I got this set up on an equatorial mount. It, uh, as an option, they would offer something similar to this. And it's uh, cute as can be. This sold for about $80, new, back in the 1960s or 70s. And it's a uh, four and a quarter inch, about F4 uh, or so, telescope. Very, very fast. That means, because of the, the speed of the optical system, the optics are not going to be really, really great. Uh, they just can't be in a Newtonian that's got that short of a uh, focal ratio, it just, they can't be that good. But it's a good scope for, say, wide field viewing. They advertise it for planetary and lunar. Mm, limited, you know, very limited. <laughs> I'm sure you could see the rings of Saturn, or see that Saturn had rings. Kind of like an astroscan, and we'll compare it with an astroscan here in a minute. Anyway, on an equatorial mount, not bad. You could also, of course, put it on any kind of a standard tripod. Let's see if I can take this off. Okay, this is much the way it was shown in the ads. And you got a little, uh, little four inch telescope on a tabletop tripod. Be much better on a bigger tripod and on, of course, a better mount. So there's the Coulter CT100. Let me show you, I'll show you some close ups. Okay, let me show you a few things about the operation of the uh, CT100. First of all, let me show you how this slides on here. This thing, as you can see, that's a nice solid hunk of aluminum. And this has got dovetails like that that slide right on to that. The nice thing about this is that, of course, it makes it very adjustable. You can slide it anywhere from there to there. Same thing applies here. Here's the mirror. And in addition, the mirror has this, which basically just moves this housing back and forth a little bit on that dovetail thing. Um, guessing it'll probably focus somewhere in this general vicinity here. It's a zoom eyepiece, probably from a binocular. And it slides right in there. It does come also with a uh, 12 millimeter and a 6 millimeter Kellner. Also, this thing you'll notice this image erecting system has a shortened tube here, and that's so that the tube doesn't interfere with the light path going through the telescope. And I think you can see that. Oops, let me turn this right. 
So uh, that helps avoid that problem. Now here's something that is really cool. This is a camera adapter. And the camera adapter is made so that you can use this with eyepiece projection. And the way it works is as follows. You have to find you have to find one of these eyepieces, like this, say the 12 millimeter. And the 12 millimeter slides inside here. Okay. Tighten that down. Now the 12 millimeter is inside there, and this is a uh, standard kind of a thread that works T thread. So that now goes on your camera. This is your old style Nikon camera, whatever you might have. Now this goes in there like that. Now you're set up for astrophotography, at least of one sort or another. You may have to slide it together a little bit, although with the eyepiece projection system, it might be okay just that way. Uh, let me show you probably the best way to mount this telescope. If I was actually going to use this telescope um, to look at something in the sky, I would certainly mount it on something like this. This is a nice Unitron Altaz mount. Uh, instead of being equatorial, this is Altaz, so this eyepiece is always going to be in a convenient location. You know, convenient to look through. And that'll be a very nice, you know, good slow motions in both altitude and azimuth. So this is probably, this is certainly the way I would go. Uh, you want something with slow motions. And a, a standard camera tripod would probably be okay, but this is just going to be a bit more comfortable for you. Okay, believe it or not, these two scopes are identical. And I mean that strictly in the sense of the optics. They're four inch, a little bit more, four and a quarter inch, uh, very fast telescopes. This is the very famous and very friendly AstroScan. And this is, of course, the CT100. The CT100 is extremely compact and very, very portable. And you can make it much smaller than this. So it's, a, in terms of, uh, of compactness, the CT100 will win. In terms of friendliness, this probably would win though. The AstroScan is easier to work, especially for kids. It does have a finder. It's a simple finder, but it's a peep scope finder. This you can get, a, uh, you could, and you still could put on a six by 30 finder for this, or maybe even make a little peep scope of some sort for it. Um, either way, you're in pretty good shape with either of these little scopes for a uh, this might be an excellent scope for backpacking. Uh, this might be an excellent scope for kids. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Coulter CT100 Classic Telescope from the 1970s. Thank you for watching.